Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Brandon, and today I want to talk to you about another method of local Windows privilege escalation, and that is exploiting unquoted service paths. So let's get into talking about what this vulnerability is and how it works. Then we'll get into how to identify the vulnerability and finally the fun step on how to exploit the vulnerability. So let's take a look at the services that we have. Uh, this machine is just a standard Windows 10 machine. It's the same one that I've been using that we showed in the uh, domain setup video. Again, just a standard Windows 10 install. It is joined to a domain, but that's not critical for this privilege escalation. So if we take a look at the services here, we're actually going to be going after a service called Vuln Service. So let's go ahead and just identify that service right off the bat. Now, again, this is just for demonstration purposes. Of course, we'll talk about how to find uh, these actual vulnerable services after we explain you know, what this vulnerability is. So if we take a look at this Vuln Service here, let's double click on that. The important thing to notice here is the path to the executable. So whenever this service is started, this is the executable that's actually going to be run. So let's just copy this path here. And I want to go ahead and open up uh, Notepad real quick so we can start to look at some of this stuff visually and get an idea of how this works. So keep in mind, this is the executable that's going to be executed every time this service is started. So you would think that it's going to go, OK, let's go into the C folder and then program files and Vuln service and execute this service.exe, right? Well, that is true, and that is how it's working. But typically, whenever you have spaces in the path name, you need to, inc you need to enclose this service path with quotes. The reason for this is because every time this path is referenced, we need to ensure that these spaces are not misinterpreted. So we know that if we enclose this in quotes, we know every time this path is referenced, it's going to go all the way through and it's going to know exactly where to look. This is it knows this is just one single argument to go through C slash program file slash bone service slash service dot exe. That might sound a little confusing, but looks let's take a look at how the pathing could work and how Windows could interpret this if the service path is left unquoted. So again, here's just the regular path that we're using to execute this service.exe. And on paper, you might think it looks fine. There are no problems here. But again, if we do not have this path in quotes, Windows is going to try to find it in, in a few different ways. And it's going to first, it's going to go through this path and it's going to think we're referencing C slash program dot exe. And then since there's a space here, it's going to say, well, all right, well, here's the path to the executable. And the rest of this are arguments to pass to that executable. But once it figures out that program.exe is no longer there, it's going to keep looking. So let's paste this path in again. So we know program isn't there. So program files, we must be going into that directory. And then, all right, we have another space here. So are we referencing vuln.exe? I don't know. That's next in the list. So let's take a look. So it's going to think, all right, we're referencing C slash program file slash vuln.exe. It's going to try to execute whatever's there. If no executable is there, that it, you know, it won't be able to execute that, of course. And again, it's going to think that these are arguments to pass to this executable. But once it finds out that vuln.exe does not exist, it's going to go all the way through C slash program file slash vuln service and then execute service.exe, which is the intended file. But if we left this service path in quotes like we did right up here, it would just reference the correct file right away. It would read this as one argument instead of trying to figure out, okay, which, which part of this is the executable? Is it C slash program? Is it C slash program file slash vuln? It would know exactly that C slash program file slash vuln service slash service dot exe is the full path. And that's exactly where we need to go. It would skip these two steps in trying to parse that path. So, we can exploit this as an attacker if this service is running as a high privileged user, such as system, and we have write access to any of these directories where these right before the directory where the space occurs, right? So in order to exploit this, we would need access to write to the C drive, or we would need access to write to C slash program files. Because again, we could place a file here named program.exe in the C drive. And as soon as this Vuln service is started, since it's unquoted, it's going to go through this parsing of the path. And if it finds a program here named program.exe, it's going to run it. And that's what we can use to drop our payload into, into the C directory. Or we can do the same thing and drop it into C slash program files if we name it vuln.exe. So hopefully that clarifies how this vulnerability actually works and behaves because of the path parsing that takes place on Windows service paths. Now, there are a few different ways that we can identify this. You can do it manually or you can use power up. 
Personally, I'm a big fan of Power Up. I use it all the time and I find it extremely useful. So here is the GitHub repository for Powersploit, which Power Up is a part of. It's in this Privest category here, and you can see the Power Up module. I'll leave a link to this down below in the description in case you want to go check it out. I use this all the time for Windows privilege escalation, and it is absolutely amazing. So let's just go ahead and fire up PowerShell. I already have uh, Power Up downloaded. So let's launch PowerShell. And just so we, just so you're aware, we are running as this uh, user named LowPriv, which is just a regular user on the system. We're not in any special groups or administrative privilege or anything like that. So let's just go into our downloads directory, and we should have our uh, PowerSploit in there. And again, we're just going to go into the Privesk section. So in here, we can see that we have Power Up. So we're just going to import that module. Let's do import module, and then. Um, let's see, do power up. Perfect. So that now has been imported. So now that we have all those methods available to us, a lot of times people will just do this invoke all checks. So we could do invoke uh, dash all checks. Oh, make sure I spelled that correctly. So you could run this and it would run through all the different privilege escalation checks that are available in the script. But for what we're doing right now to just make this short and simple, uh, part of power up is this get dash, uh, unquoted service. So if we run this, it's going to find all of these services that exist on the system where their paths are not quoted. And again, just like we showed before, that can be a big problem and we can potentially use it for privilege escalation. So let's go ahead and run this and see what the output is. Well, this is great. We can see that Voln service is the only one that is vulnerable. We can see that here is the path to the executable. Notice it is not in quotes. And the modifiable path here is C, which is implying that we have write access to the C drive. So we should be able to drop a program into the C drive called program.exe. That will be our payload. Whenever this service is restarted, we will be able to execute our payload and get some code execution on the system as a local system right here. So we could potentially just gain system access and uh, you know, add a new backdoor administrative user, get a reverse shell, something like that. Now, part of the PowerSploit exploit framework does come with these abuse functions. So it does tell you how you could um, use some of their tools to go ahead and, and um, exploit this vulnerability. But we're gonna go ahead and create a payload with MSF Venom and drop it on the box that way. So I'm gonna switch right over to my Kali machine. Let's just log into here real quick. And what we're gonna do is just go ahead and create a payload with MSF Venom. I actually already have this command typed out, so you don't have to watch me uh, type this out, but let's talk about what it's doing. So we'll run MSF Venom. We're gonna specify the payload as Windows slash add user. What this is gonna do is just add a new user to the system and automatically add them to the local administrator group. We're gonna specify the user here, name is backdoor admin, and the password is please sub exclamation point. The file type is going to be an executable file and we're gonna name it service.exe. Let's go ahead and run this. It should only take a few seconds. Once this is finished running, we'll have this service.exe, which could be our payload that we're gonna drop onto the box. Perfect. Now we can see that we have this service.exe on here. Now it's time to transfer it from our Kali machine to our Windows machine. So let's just use a uh, simple Python HTTP server to do that. So let's just do sudo Python uh, dash M, simple HTTP server, and then we'll do port 80. Enter the password here. Awesome. So now we have that running. Let's switch right back to our Windows machine. And I'm going to open up Edge real quick. Let's just browse to uh, 192.168.169. That's my Kali box. And let's just download this service.exe. Now, since we're using a browser, it's going to get blocked by AV. But let's just go ahead and select keep. And we'll keep fighting Windows Defender here and we'll keep anyways. Perfect. So now we have service.exe in our downloads. So let's see, let's actually go to view and let's turn these file name extensions on. Awesome. So we have service.exe. Now again, what we want to do is drop this into the C drive and name it program.exe. So if, again, if we go back to the exploit path here, since we're trying to run this path and it's not quoted, the first place it's going to look is for this c slash program.exe. So let's just go ahead and copy this service.exe. Let's go ahead and browse to the C drive. Let's paste service.exe in there. And now let's go ahead and rename it to program.exe. Awesome. 
So that, now that is all set and it's in place, the only thing left to do is to actually go ahead and restart the service. Once the service is restarted, it's going to go ahead and execute C slash program.exe because of the unquoted service path. So let's open up our services and let's go to Vuln service again. Now, if we right click on here, we actually don't have permission to start or stop this service. So that can be a pain and something that you'll run into potentially when you're trying to abuse some of these services. But what we can do is just go ahead and restart the entire box. Because of course, once the machine shuts down and turns back on, all the services will get restarted. So uh, once we restart this box, it should execute our payload and we should have a new user called backdoor admin on this box. So let's just go ahead and go here and go to restart. Perfect. So now let's just wait for this box to restart. All right, so our box just restarted. So let's go ahead and log back in as our low priv user here. And hopefully it's now that everything has restarted, our Vuln service will have restarted and executed our payload. So let's go ahead and open up a command prompt here. And let's just type in net user to see the users on the box. And now we can see that we have this backdoor admin account. So we should be able to just log out and log back in as backdoor admin. So let's just go ahead and sign out. And of course, if you were doing this over WinRM or RDP, you know, you could log in through those remote methods as well. But since we're just working in uh, my home lab, we can just sign right in to our local, uh, to the local box via a console session. So I think we just need to specify uh, win 10-1. And then let's see, we need backdoor underscore admin. The password was please sub exclamation point. And now we should be able to log in as this user. It's going to take a second just to initiate all this. But once we log in, we should be able to see that we are a local administrator on this machine. All right, so now we are logged into all that backdoor admin user. So let's just go ahead and type in CMD, run as administrator, and let's see. Yep, we are administrator. We do have a new administrator account that we added to that box because of that unquoted service path vulnerability. If you found this video useful, please remember to like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.